Pitt training camp is just a few weeks away, and while the Panthers return a lot of experience and a lot of talent, they still have some open positions, and there will be some position battles to determine when training camp starts in earnest as they prepare for a Week 1 matchup against West Virginia. We'll start with the offense today, where things are a little bit more straightforward, but there's still some questions to iron out. Obviously, starting at the top, there will be a pretty intense quarterback battle between Keaton Slovis, a transfer from USC, and Nick Patty, who spent four years with this pit program and started the Peach Bowl last season before injuring his shoulder on the second drive of the game, diving for a touchdown. Some people have treated this as a foregone conclusion that, that Slovis will start with Patty kind of pushing him. That it's, you know, they're kind of treating it as a, it's kind of the worst known secret in the world that Slovis is is the favorite in some ways. Um, while I think, you know, I've talked about this before, but while I think Slovis is probably the more talented quarterback, I think Patty certainly has a shot uh, given his experience within the system, um, but also his creativity, his his touch on his touch on balls and um, his ability to run all can, you know, give him a good chance to, to start um, and compete and compete in a real way. But that's is, this is the kind of thing that we won't really know even when uh, we're able to step in and see a little bit of practice and talk to and talk to people within the program. Uh, Narduzzi, Pat Narduzzi, and, and the rest of his staff are notoriously uh, protective of information like this, and they don't like to give give away who's winning starting uh, starting position battles too early. Um, it, and just the way that Pitt sets up media access at their practices, we're not able to see um, a lot of live drills or seven on seven even, or uh, definitely not, you know, 11 on 11 uh, uh, drills or workouts. So it, it's the type of thing that we won't really know uh, a firm answer about. I'd, I'd have to expect until game week, and I'd expect uh, uh, pretty close up until kickoff on Thursday night of week one. Moving to running back, this is kind of a very uh, uh, similar situation to what's gone on over the past couple of years. Um, Israel Abanacanda and Vincent Davis seem to be uh, the two backs that will, that will take the bulk of the carries. They're the two more experienced backs, um, and they're both very talented in their own rights. So they do give you something a little bit different. Um, Abanacanda gives you um, some more power. Um, he's a little stronger, maybe a little faster, while Vincent Davis gives you some more wiggle um, and a little bit better shake. Um, he's, I, I think in my mind, Vincent Davis is a little bit of a better pass catcher, but uh, Abanacanda certainly is not uh, unable to play a factor in the passing game. He certainly proved that last year, but I think he's a much stronger runner. Um, Rodney Hammond, you can't forget about him either. He he played really well as a freshman last year. Saw a lot of time, especially late in games. Um, Pitt seemed to kind of have a, a pretty consistent rotation where they would play Davis and Abanacanda a lot in the in the first you know two and a half three quarters. They would let them take their licks um, and and then uh, bring in Hammond as kind of the closer, some fresh legs to, to run out the clock if they had a big lead or, um, you know, uh, uh, just to keep keep things interesting and keep uh, keep opposing defenses on their toes. But Hammond was also, you know, a, a very good back uh, on his own. He played a lot in the, in the Syracuse game and caught a touchdown in the ACC championship game. So he will certainly be in the mix and certainly – uh, if not play a similar role to what he played last year, play a, an even larger role. Daniel Carter is also a guy that we've got to start paying attention to a little bit more now. Um, he figures to be kind of a fullback, H-back type of type of player. Um, he was a Conway Award winner during the spring on offense. That's for the most improved player over the course of the spring of spring workouts and drills. Um, in the spring game, everyone saw him run with both power and some shiftiness. He could catch the ball. So he's someone who could definitely be in the mix, too. We'll see how Frank Signetti, uh, the newly minted offensive coordinator, tries to use him uh, in this offense, um, especially as he maybe tries to tweak things and move this offense towards a more run-heavy run heavy attack. Now that Kenny Pickett and Jordan Addison are not in the mix, uh, passing the ball is certainly not as sure a thing as it was, as it was last year for this team. Along the O-line, pretty easy to, to see who's going to start there. Um, the... Quintet of Owen Drexel, Marcus Minor, Carter Warren, uh, Gabe Hoy, and Jake Cradle um, will 
return and take the bulk of the snaps. Um, most of their backups also come back too, uh, save for Keldrick Wilson, um, offensive lineman. He was a graduate transfer from Hampton, I believe, uh, and he is gone after this year. So there'll be an open spot there. There'll be open kind of rotation spot. Uh, Matt Goncalves um, is a prime candidate to fill that role. Ryan Jacoby, a uh, former four-star recruit, a transfer from Ohio State, who came in last year uh, during training camp. Um, he did miss the a, the uh, May 1st deadline to transfer without um, having to sit, uh, transfer one time without having to sit. So he had to wait a little bit, wait for a waiver. Um, he did end up seeing some time at the end of last season in the ACC championship game and the Peach Bowl in particular. Um, so he could definitely be in the mix. He's a talented guy. Uh, Blake Zubo Zubovic is, is another veteran guy that, um, uh, especially, you know, at a position like offensive line, uh, experience is so important. Blake's played a lot of football, so he'll definitely be in the mix uh, to be a rotation player, if not um, just one of those backups. And then uh, Terrence Moore too is someone that is someone that you should watch. Um, he's he's another veteran player that that I think could be in the mix to uh, to sit behind one of those guards um, and, and rotate in as needed. Getting to tight end, I think that's another position where you're all but set um, at uh, uh, at tight end. I think uh, Gavin Bartholomew is undoubtedly the starter at that position. It's his it's his job to lose. Um, the, there's some interesting players behind them behind him. You know, Jake Renda is a young is a young tight end that that you know maybe when Pitt runs two two tight ends or whatever, um, like they did a lot last year with Gavin Bartholomew. And, Lucas Kroll, he could be an option there. We haven't seen much of him. He didn't play a ton last year. Um, also, Carter Johnson, um, who's a really interesting player, um, a former defensive lineman who was a four-star coming out of high school, committed to TCU, didn't play a lot there, went Juco, lost about 70 pounds, and converted to tight end um, and, and had a couple successful seasons. Or, well, really didn't play much of his first season um, in Juco, but did, did really well in his second season, um, catching for catching yards and touchdowns. Um, he's another player that you that you should watch too. Just a big body, um, kind of in that Lucas Crow mold. We'll see how athletic he is when we're able to get into practice um, beginning of next month. Just watch how he moves around, how he's able to catch the ball. Um, just for someone who's relatively new at the position, obviously played for a couple of years, but still that's that's relatively new for him. So I'm interested to see how he. How he plays and, and what he looks like uh, coming into camp this year. Um, so, so those are guys who will uh, definitely back up Bartholomew. Bartholomew has a little bit of room to grow. Obviously, as a true freshman, he he had a really good season, but it was kind of a good season for a true freshman. Um, he he really only had to play a limited role with Crawl taking uh, most of the you know, passing down snaps. Um, Bartholomew didn't really have to run a full route tree. Um, he was mostly running in the flats or kind of down the sidelines. They were pretty simplistic concept, con concepts um, that uh, Bartholomew excelled in. And we can round out this conversation by talking about the receivers a little bit. Um, we're mostly set there, you got to feel like. Uh, Jared Wayne's going to lead the group. Um, he's a veteran. I really like him as a player. Um, strong hands, can catch contested balls, um, see how his route running kind of develops, and if he's able to make uh, uh, you know, improve in that area too. Um, but he'll ha he'll be supported um, by you know Kanata Mumfield, another guy that that uh, people expect to have a really big season. He's a transfer from Akron. Was a freshman All American last year for the Zips. Um, figures to be a slot receiver. He's a little shorter, um, but he's someone who has that shiftiness and stuff like that. Um, but as you saw the spring game, he caught about a, he caught a real long pass, about a 55 yard touchdown from, from Nick Patty. So he definitely has deep ball capability. Um, he's certainly young, but I think trending upwards and, and could be that kind of complete receiver that people imagine. Him to be. Uh, Bob means uh, transfer from another transfer from Louisiana tech is not someone to overlook. He's a real, um, he's someone who, as uh, talking to, um, talking briefly with some players over the summer, he's someone that they have singled out as, um, as a real standout in 
seven on seven drills and summer workouts, spring workouts, things like that. So he's, it seems like that trio of Wayne, Mumfield, and Means will be your three starters. Um, and then Jaden Bradley and Jalen Barden, uh, they are your kind of next men up. They're your next two. So they will kind of round out, they figure to kind of round out the, the rotation at wide out. Um, they're two young players. Um, I think both uh, are rising sophomores this year. Uh, they showed some flashes. Um, I think especially Barden made some really nice catches and some plays in special teams that showed you a little bit of the explosiveness and the shiftiness that that he can that he can use to his advantage. But um, there were some you know, mental errors, some drops, stuff like that that they'll need to clean up if they really want to be a factor. Um, I, I think Bradley in particular is someone who's really primed to break out. He's a big body, got long arms. He reminds me a lot of Jared Wayne a little bit when, when Wayne was first um, coming up and earning his way under the depth chart, and especially during the 2020 season. Um, I, I remember, I think he, I just remember watching them play and thinking, you know, big guys, long arms. Um, I think Bradley has a little bit of room to fill out just muscle-wise. Um, before he can kind of get to that same place as as Wayne, but um, he certainly has a lot of potential. And I think the programs, the coaches, and players inside the program are excited about what he can do. That kind of rounds out the offense. As you can see, you know most of uh, most of that offense is set more or less. We we at least know who will rotate in, if not who will take the bulk of the snaps and produce most of the yards and catches and passes and whoever is like that. So. Not a ton of questions, just need to kind of round out the edges a little bit and obviously figure out the quarterback situation, which is important for just about any team, any football team at any 